Hi, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated. The early iPhone games were the best. In those days, people were exploring what it meant to have new tools like gyroscopes and touchscreens in a device, and so they weren't completely aware of what they couldn't do, and the level of creativity was off the charts. Games come to mind like Touch Physics, Elis, Aerox, and Chopper 2. Take, for example, my favorite iPhone game of all time, Star Defense, which reimagined the classic tower defense concept in 3D and produced the best iOS game in history, in my opinion. I have literally played this game for dozens of hours, but a couple years ago, after I ignored multiple warnings that it wouldn't work with an upcoming iOS, I saw this error. The same with so many other games and apps. For a while I felt hopeless. A lot of the game manufacturers were out of business, so it seemed unlikely they would ever be updated to work on a current iOS. The apps themselves were still on my phone. Could I export them somehow? Run them in some kind of a virtual machine? Could I get into the file structure of my iPhone 7 and copy the files to another device? I googled like crazy and I eventually felt resigned to the idea that my favorite games were just a casualty of technology. I felt cheated and the experience made me reluctant to buy new games. Why quote-unquote buy something and become attached to it if it can be taken away? The answer ended up being remarkably simple. As part of my refurbishing business, I acquired a large lot of computers from a store that was closing, and with the computers was a pile of iPads. Predictably, the iPad 2s, 3s, and 4s were all iCloud locked, which makes them as good as doorstops, but there were a few original iPads, the iPad 1. These will only take up to iOS 5, which seems like a limitation at first, but one huge benefit is that iOS 5 is immune to the dreaded iCloud lock, which means any old iPad 1 is going to be a usable device once restored. And iOS 5 is modern enough to take advantage of an iCloud login, and it's also new and old enough that most classic games will play on it. I restored and set up one of the original iPads, and I had an idea. Can I log this into my iCloud and then re-download the old games, since I did purchase them after all? In short, yes, it worked, and here's how to do it. First, restore the iPad. It's easy enough to do if you Google it. If it's stuck on a password that you don't know, you might have to put it in recovery mode and connect it to a computer with iTunes in order to wipe it. Second, once restored and set up, log into iCloud. Go to Settings, iCloud, and log in. For those confused about what an iCloud login is, it's the login and password that you use to buy apps on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. Third, once iCloud is set up, go to the App Store. Go to Purchased Apps, and go through the list until you see the ones you want and are able to download them. You can also search for the name. Take note of the iPad, iPhone button at the top. If you don't see your apps under iPad, click over to iPhone. The iPhone came out earlier than the iPad, so a lot of the first games were considered iPhone games, even though they also work on iPads. So that's it! You've freed your old apps from the lock of modern technology. I've since set up all three of my iPad 1s, and I have them around the house fulfilling various functions. Remarkably, the batteries still hold a decent charge, and while the iPads are not super quick, they absolutely run fast enough to utilize the games I'm playing, since those games and the original iPad hardware are of the same era. What if you're not as lucky as me and you don't have a pile of original iPads? I recommend checking out eBay where they can be had for about $40. Make sure to get one with a charger cable, and take note that they use the original charger, not a newer lightning cable. Also, as a side note, it turns out that iPhones up to the 3 and iPod Touches up to the 4 function basically the same as the original iPad. However, those devices are very small by today's standards, which is why you might as well have the original iPad's big screen. Anyway, as I've always said, if a device seems obsolete, it's because you're looking at it with the wrong purpose in mind. Change that purpose and it's usable again. That requires some creativity and out-of-the-box thinking, but you can almost always find a new use for a device. These fully working iPads sell for $40 because the vast majority of consumers can only imagine them running the latest and greatest apps and on the newest iOS. In this case, playing quote-unquote obsolete games turned out to be the repurposing that made the iPads relevant again but I found other purposes as well, for example using them as drum trigger pads for audio production software. Since they are so cheap, they can even be reimagined as single function devices that wouldn't have been practical when they cost $500. Why not have a fancy big screen alarm clock or a kitchen countdown timer that also plays music and tells you the weather? Summing up, 
this revelation has given me my old games back, and it's got me thinking about all the other quote-unquote obsolete hardware I come across, and I hope it will inspire you to do the same. On that note, I'll leave you with some video of Star Defense, the best iOS game ever. I really think you should find an old iPad and try it out. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this or found it useful, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.